Disclaimer. These experiments are dangerous. Do not attempt anything you are about to see in this video at home unless you know what you are doing and understand the risks involved. Also, please do not thumbs down this video just because I am doing something dangerous that involves high voltages and sparks. I know what I am doing and taking all safety into consideration should something go wrong. Plus, if you are a big baby and have a fear of electricity, like some people I know, then please stop watching this video now. Okay, we're not in the workshop today, we're in the high voltage lab because I'm going to do some more base fed Tesla coil experiments. Now before I start, I mean before I start, just going to walk you around a guided tour of the circuit. So, let's start with the power supply. So, we're using my GU81 valve. And this is the transformer that is going to power the filament. Now this is the transformer out of that uninterruptible power supply. Some people said that wasn't a good idea to use this transformer to step down mains voltage, but it seems to be perfectly okay with that. The highest resistance I got was between these two wires here, which came out to about 2.5 ohms. So I put the mains voltage in there, and then that powers the filament and it seemed to have no trouble. I've also got a soft start circuit, so the filament doesn't come on full intensity right away. For the high voltage, I'm using a microwave oven transformer, pretty big one. So, a high voltage comes out of this transformer here, then it goes into this choke coil. Ignore this, that's not connected at the moment. That will be, that's my grid leak circuit, but we're not using that at the moment. Then, out of this choke, into the bottom of the output coil, which energizes it. Now, normally in a Tesla coil circuit, you would have another coil like this one wrapped around the bottom of the output coil, and it would be this coil that's energized. Then the magnetic coupling between this coil and this coil energizes this coil. But in this case, I'm just putting electricity straight into the bottom of the output coil. So technically, it's not a Tesla coil, but it does the same thing. So what this coil does, it's, it's a feedback coil, and that is connected to the grids of this valve here, which turns it on and off in time and at the same frequency as the output coil. It doesn't matter if you're using magnetic coupling or if you're using what I'm using, it has to be at the output coil's resonant frequency or it won't work. Anyway, that's all the theory out of the way. Now, what I want to do is I want to test different chokes and different output coils and see what kind of result I have. Also, I have multiple taps on the feedback, so I can adjust how much feedback there is. So, let's try it first with this coil and this coil, which are very similar. Then we'll try it with a few other coils, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we're ready for the first experiment. Now I've got the current going into the high voltage transformer limited by this heater here. So that is connected in series with the transformer to act as a ballast. Right, so I'll turn this on. It's on the lowest setting at the moment, so it won't let much current into the transformer. And let's see if we get anything. And nothing. I also notice that the light comes on, on the heater, telling me that the circuit is pulling a bit of current, but it's not doing anything. So I think, I don't think we've got anything seriously wrong, I just think the feedback's the wrong way around. So I'm just going to make sure the high voltage is off, and I'm going to reverse these connections on the feedback. Let's try one more time. Ah, there we go. Should really add a breakout point to that, but you can see that's working. Let's just get a zoom in on that, if the camera will... Let's just see that again and get it a bit more into the shot. 
Okay, so I've added a breakout point. This is the breakout point. Alright. Now let's put the heater on its full power. And that looks pretty good. Doesn't really show up so well on the camera. Anyway, I'm now going to add my grid leak circuit. I'm sure I just got a little tingle off that, even though the power is off. I don't care. There's just been a little bit of static charge on the Vels grid there. But anyway, we've got the grid leak in the circuit now, so let's see what that gives us. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be as good. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is try some different chokes. Okay, so this is with this choke. Let's see what kind of output we get. Oh, that's even better. So a small choke gives us a little better result. Alright. Alright, so that's what we get with this choke. Now the output coil is about 1500 turns. This choke is about 750 turns if I remember. The previous one we were using was about 1500 turns as well. So now we're going to try with a 500 turn choke. Okay, I don't even know how long I've been recording for. But anyway, we have the 500 turn choke in place. Let's see if it works. And I'd say that's even better. So it would seem that with this choke, we get the best output. Now, let's try some different output coils. Okay, so here we are with an output coil that's about between 500 and 600 turns, and we're using the 1500 turn choke. I'd say that's about the same as we got before. Maybe a little tiny bit more than what we had, but yeah, not my much. Alright, so let's try it with a different choke. Okay, this is the 700 and whatever turn. Let's see what that gives us. There's some stupid teenagers outside. Yeah, I'd say that's about the same. Alright, now let's try it with the 500 turn. 500 turn choke is in place. Let's see what this one gives us. Again, it's about the same, although my grid leak is glowing a little bit more than it was before, but... It seems to be working pretty good. Wish I spoke teenager, then I'd know what they're saying. Do you understand a word of that? Because I don't. I just don't speak teen... Okay, I don't know how much of that last run the camera got because no more space on my memory card, so I've had to delete quite a few files. Anyway, here we are with the 500 turn output coil and the 1500 turn choke. So, let's see what this gives us. Nothing, apparently. Of course, it would help if I turned the socket on. Oh, that's working. And again, it's about the same, although my grid leak comes on a little bright. So there's quite a bit of power going into the grids. Right, so here we are with the 700 and whatever choke. Let's see what this gives us. Again, I would say it's about the same. Alright, now let's try it with the 500 turn choke. So here we are with the 500 turn choke and the 500 turn output coil. And... Yeah, it's the same. So about the same amount of outputs on all three coils. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the ballast off the transformer so it is connected directly to the mains and we'll see what that gives us and hopefully nothing will blow up. Also, I would like to point out that this transformer has been running for about an hour now, and it's only just 
like skin temperature warm. Alright then, about to start testing at the full 2000 volts and for some reason my camera thinks that this thing has a face, I don't know why. Strange thing is, when I put my face in front of the camera, it doesn't think I have a face, but anyway. Because we're gonna be running this unballasted, I have reduced the feedback to about four turns, as you can see here, and I've labelled each of these wires so I know exactly how many turns of feedback I'm using. Because I know for a fact that we were getting too much feedback earlier in the ballasted tests because, well, the grid leak bulb came on pretty brightly. So, this is unballasted, with the full 2000 volts coming out of the transformer. Let's see what we get. And this is with about four turns of feedback. Alright. Alright, let's go to three turns. So this is three turns of feedback. Seems a little better. Not quite as much as I'm expecting though, and I just stood on something, but I don't know what that was. Alright, let's try with two turns of feedback. So this is two turns. Not quite so good. Right, let's try with five. You can see the grid leak bulb is coming on a bit now. Telling me that we've just got a little bit too much feedback. Alright, let's go up to six turns. See, it's a little brighter now. And finally, let's go to all seven turns because I'm insane. Yeah, I think that pretty much speaks for itself. So about three or four turns with this particular pro with this particular output coil seems to be the seems to be pretty good. Though I'm not getting as much output as I thought I would. So I'm gonna go over to this coil and see what this gives us. Okay, so here we are with a smaller output coil and three turns of feedback. Okay, well so far the other coil is looking better. Let's just try different amounts of feedback. Let's see, two turns. Okay, that's pretty crappy on two turns. Let's try Four turns. Oh, that's better. All right, let's go up to five turns. Well, five turns is pretty nice. So, as of yet, I really cannot make up my mind which coil is giving us better output. So this is six turns and it's not looking so good. Alright, let's try on seven turns. And let's see what we get this time. So yeah, I'd say about four or five turns is best with this coil. Let's go to five turns again just to see what we get with this one. Well, all in all, I would say that the other coil, the smaller coil, gives us better results. So, going with this output coil. Okay, so that was about 2000 volts AC. And now what I want to do is step that up to about 5000 volts DC. So, let the high voltage carnage begin. And also, let's try to get this tripod a little less blur. Now I'm going to be running this ballasted at first, just to make sure everything is safe. So this is ballasted with the voltage booster. Let's see what we get. All right. I'm going to try different amounts of feedback. So let's try two turns. All right. Let's try. Four Four turns. Oh, that's nice. 
See what I mean? It really matters how much feedback you're using. Right, five turns. See? See, here I'm using four turns of feedback. Let's see what we're getting there. This is the five turns of feedback. And you can see it's not quite as good. But let's go all the way up to seven turns. I hope my ugly face isn't getting in the camera. But let's go all the way up to seven turns, just because I'm insane. Yeah, seven turns really doesn't work very good. So I think I had it on about four turns, which gave us the best output. Well, that's with the ballast on its lowest setting. I'm now going to increase it a little bit so we get more power and again adjust the amount of feedback we have okay that was three turns three turns is definitely not enough let's try five turns Let's try six turns. Six turns looks nice. All right. Now I'm going to remove the ballast entirely. Let's just put it back onto four turns. Right, I'm going to remove the ballast entirely. So it's all of the transformers, so all of the mains gets in, and let's see what we get. Alright. Let's just adjust the amount of feedback we get. Brilliant. Still not quite as much as I'm expecting, but... Let's just go up a little bit more with the feedback. Ah, that's more like it. So that's with six turns. Now I'm going to go up to seven turns. Oh, that's beautiful. Not touching it, though. No way am I going to touch it, because like I said, I don't know if I already said it, but we pretty much have a direct connection from this microwave oven transformer into our output coil, so not a good idea to touch it. I like that. Let's just do that with the door closed so you can see it. Now I know some of you are saying, Oh my god, he's crazy. He shouldn't be doing this kind of thing. Well, shut up. I know what I'm doing. Because I have experience at this kind of stuff. Now before I go, I just want to try it with the 500 turn output coil. Okay, so this is with the 500 turn output coil. I'm just running it ballasted to make sure everything's alright. And we're getting pretty good output. So I'm just going to try some different amounts of feedback, so that was with four turns of feedback. That's five turns of feedback. Let's try... Let's try three turns. Okay, I'm now going to remove the ballast. And let's see what we get with this. Nice and bushy. Alright. That was three turns. Let's try four turns. Oh. I can't help myself. Right, let's go to five turns. 
Oh, look at that. Well, I think I found the better coil. Alright, I'm just going to go over to six turns of feedback just to see what that gives us. Yeah, I think that's about the best we'll get, but look at it. Well, I thought it would be a bit rude to not do it against the black background. So, here is a final run against a black background. Now that's a base fed Tesla coil. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, goodbye. A little bit of a problem. We've got some corona coming off the feedback, and that shouldn't be happening. You can see that there. I don't know why my feedback has an arc, and why it's arcing to plastic-coated cardboard, that's kind of weird. So, where that came from. Swap the connections on the feedback, and I almost tripped over something. Now, this is the transformer out of that switch, um, out of that under, out of that un- out of the uninterruptible power supply.